Adobe just announced that it's going to make Photoshop on the web available for free. Why are they doing this and what can it do? Let's dive in. Hey there, Aaron here from techphotoguide.com, and Adobe has long been the king of photo editing software with Photoshop at the top of that hill. I mean, heck, Photoshopping and Photoshopped have become words in our language at this point. There are other capable editing programs out there. I've used some, you've probably used some, but ultimately, you know, Adobe's Creative Cloud Suite and Photoshop are the gold standard when it comes to editing photos. So why would Adobe make a version of that software available completely for free? So what actually was announced this week in June 2022 is that Adobe is testing Photoshop for the web being available for free uh, in Canada. And the speculation is that they will eventually roll this out to the rest of the world. Uh, you know, it's a, got a similar interface to the full version of Photoshop. It certainly does not have all of the capabilities, but it runs in a browser, it runs in Chrome or Edge, and it gives you quite a bit of photo editing capabilities. I'm gonna show you an example of that here in just a couple minutes. So similar features, it's got tools on the left, it's got layer panels and things like that on the right. When we look at the tool set that's available in Photoshop for the web, it's got a lot of the things that you know and love. It's got selections. It has, you know, basic selections with, you know, the marquee tool and, but it also has some AI powered selections such as selecting the subject and automatically removing the background. You have your basic brush tools. You have the eraser tool. You can fill with a solid color. You can do gradients. Uh, you can use healing tools such as the clone stamp or the healing brush or the spot healing brush. Obviously you can crop images, not a big shocker there. You do have the ability to use curves. So if you do some advanced editing with curves and uh, adjustment layers with curves, that capability exists in Photoshop for the web. Just this week, they added the dodge and burn capability into the software as well. So those tools are now available. So rather than keep talking about it, let's dive in. Let's switch over. I'm gonna show you a short video here of me editing a photo using Photoshop for the web. All right, here we are on the Creative Cloud web interface at creativecloud.adobe.com. I'm logged into my account. And if I click over here on the left, I can go to the beta version of Photoshop for the web. I'm gonna select a file here to import, upload a photo of one of our dogs who actually passed away recently. So we'll memorialize him with some photo edits in this video. And so as you can see from this image, you know, it's not the greatest photo. There's some clutter, there's some splotches and stuff. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna crop this. You'll see the overall interface looks generally like Photoshop that you're used to. You've got toolbar down the left-hand side, uh, layers panel over on the right, and some other stuff around there. So I'm gonna choose the crop tool on the left. I'm gonna uh, crop it down a little bit from the top. There we go. All right, just a simple crop there. I'll click done in the upper right. So you'll see that even with that crop, there's some stuff that needs cleaned up. There's a little bit of paper or something in the upper right hand corner. There's some splotches on the carpets. There's a chunk of who knows what here on the floor in the lower right. Uh, anyway, so let's clean those up over on the left hand side. You'll see I have a set of cloning and healing tools, much like in the full version of Photoshop. I'm gonna start with the clone stamp to get rid of some of the obvious stuff uh, in that upper right. Uh, hold down the Alt key, pick an area to sample from and clone out, uh, clone out some of that stuff on the carpet there. Then I'm gonna switch over to the healing brush. Again, hold down Alt to select a source area just like I would on Photoshop on my computer. Get rid of that. So I can get rid of some of this uh, junk over here down in the lower right. Bring over that. All right, yeah, there we go. Oh, a little crumb of something right here in front of his nose. I'm gonna get rid of that as well. Okay, so we've cleaned up the worst. Uh, one more spot. You always find one more spot on the carpet there. We'll call that good enough for now. So I've done that cleanup. Uh, I wanna maybe see if I can bring out just a little bit more shadow detail. Over on the far right, you can see I have layers and I'm gonna go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer and then tweak this a little bit just like I would in 
any other version of Photoshop here. Bring my my midtones up. There we go. All right, I like how that looks. We'll call that good enough for now. So I've added the curves layer. One of the other things we can do here with Photoshop is uh, let's use some of the AI powered selection tools and remove this dog out to a different layer. So over here on the left hand side, I'm gonna go to selection tools. Uh, I'm gonna make sure on the right that I have my underlying layer chosen. And then on my selections, I'm gonna choose select subject. It's gonna do its thing, select the subject from the photo. And what I should end up with here is the dog selected off of the carpet, off of the floor. And you can see I've got the, the marching ants as I expected. So once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a mask with that. So down at the very bottom, I can choose this mask tool. You'll see that it created a mask on that layer as I can now see over on my layers panel over on the right. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good and it'll do for what we wanna do it now. So one of the things that Photoshop for the web can do is you know basic graphic stuff with brushing and filling and gradients and things like that so let's say i wanted to have my dog just on some sort of a cool gradient so i'm going to add a new layer here i'm going to put the the layer down below the rest of them and on that layer i'm just going to add a gradient i've already chosen a couple of colors here for the foreground and the background on the left hand side i'm going to choose fill with gradient I'm just gonna draw a diagonal line across this image and you can see Photoshop does its thing and fills that right up. So obviously that was a quick demo, um, but what you'll see is there are a lot of things very similar to Photoshop on the desktop. And if you have skills using Photoshop already, you'll pick this up very easily. If you haven't used Photoshop before, starting to learn the skills with Photoshop on the web will well prepare you for moving into the full version of the application. As you can see, it's available today if you have a Creative Cloud subscription. Uh, I mentioned the news that it's being put out there for free for others. Let's dive into that in just a second, but I did want to say if you're finding this interesting, if this kind of material is useful for you, please do like this video and click subscribe down below so that you get the next updates that I post. So why would Adobe make this available for everyone eventually for free? We've seen photography become a situation where everybody's a photographer now. With the proliferation of affordable DSLRs and then smartphones, photography isn't just for serious hobbyists and for professionals anymore. The reality is everybody in the world is making a lot of photos. And everybody in the world needs to edit those photos. And so Adobe was faced with a choice. They could either keep going down the path that they've been down traditionally, where they make serious tools with serious prices for serious professionals, or they could look at opening things up to make their tools more accessible to amateurs, hobbyists, and folks that maybe aren't quite ready for the full Creative Cloud suite. So if everybody's gonna be a photographer, everybody needs photo editing. But the full version of Photoshop, that's a pretty heavy piece of software, not just in cost, but in complexity. You know, there are people that have used Photoshop for five, 10, 15 years that still don't understand all of the features of the program. The other reality is that there are a lot of upstart competitors in this space, especially in the space for social media, online graphics, and things like that. Adobe is not just competing with other serious photo editing software, but Adobe is competing with tools online like Canva or PixArt that allow people to use those tools in a browser for free or for a minimal cost. And I think what Adobe's doing here is smart by putting up a pretty powerful offering, looking to make it free to get people into the Adobe ecosystem and to get them used to working with Photoshop so that when they do reach a point where they have a more advanced need, they'll be looking to graduate into Adobe's Photoshop products instead of using a competitor's offering. So I've appreciated seeing Adobe adapt and innovate when they switched to a subscription model for Creative Cloud a few years ago. A lot of people were concerned that they might get stagnant, but they certainly aren't doing that. They're continuing to add new features into both the paid standalone software, but also into the Creative Cloud on the web. So keep an eye on Photoshop for the web. I expect we'll continue to see it develop and keep an eye on what Adobe is doing in the future. 
If this is something that you think you're going to use, or if you already have used it, I would love to have you drop a comment down below and tell me about it. As always, I'll be back here next week on this channel. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it with another photo topic. Take care, everyone.